Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for watching me today and the Lord bless you. Today I want to talk about Rejoice, Highly Favored One. And I'm really talking to you. And I know that that has to sink in a little bit. You, you got to hear this a bit. Rejoice, Highly Favored One. Rejoice, Highly Favored One. I'm, I'm speaking to you by the Holy Spirit. Believe it right now. I'm looking at you. Rejoice, highly favored one. Believe it about yourself. My Father loves me. My Father knows who I am. My Father is for me. My Father is with me. My Father is God. Jesus Christ is my redeeming Savior, my Lord. I am highly favored. I love the scripture where it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 6, I think, or verse 8. I think it's verse 6. It says, we have been made accepted in the Beloved. Wow, what a wonderful thought according to the riches of His grace. Oh, what a wonderful thought. You have been made acceptable to God. Well, pleasing to the Heavenly Father. Rejoice, highly favored one. And of course, that brings me to the scripture here in the Gospel of Luke chapter 1, starting at verse 28, where the angel Gabriel comes to Mary, this young girl. And Mary, it says there, was betrothed or engaged to Joseph, who was of the house of David. And she was a virgin. Having come in, the angel said to her, in verse 28 of Luke 1, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and considered what manner of greeting this was. Here's an angel coming in and he looks at her and he says, Mary, rejoice, highly favored one. And she is troubled by the saying. In other words, she must not have heard that before. I'm not saying that her mom and dad didn't love her or that Joseph didn't love her when he was with her, you know, as they were engaged. But this was a whole nother, nother thinking, another, this was a whole, I've never felt this, experienced this. I don't know this. I don't know this. Do you know a lot of people, they don't know this. They don't know what it feels like. They don't know the revelation, the wonder, the marvel of being highly favored by God. Not just favored, highly favored. Come on. And I'm speaking to you again by the Holy Spirit. Rejoice, highly favored one. Believe that God's love is set upon you for good. Amen. And she wondered what manner of greeting this was. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You see, fear can have its character in our lives in ways that we think nobody loves me, nobody cares about me, nobody thinks about me, nobody wants me. She rejected me, he rejected me, they rejected me. They thought I was ugly. They thought I was no good. They thought I was stupid. They, what are you remembering? What are you, what, what's living inside of you that, that actually is all there holding your precious soul captive to a cloud of darkness and shades and shadows of the past? where maybe you went through things that really were difficult and painful. And maybe your attitudes, you know, maybe your ways were, <laughs> were not so good. But what stuck with you is what people said or thought or acted. And now the Lord is coming to pull that out of your soul and out of your life. And he's saying to you, come on, rejoice, highly favored one. Let your life begin to shine. Become radiant with joy. Become filled with joy. Become filled with joy, highly favored one. You have found favor with God. Come on. If God be for me, who could be against me? Paul said in Romans 8. When you come into that, Jesus said to his disciples in John 8, <clears throat> you will all leave me, but I will not be alone. For the Father is always with me because I always do those things that please Him. Do you see, Jesus believed that, it, that He was well-pleasing to the Father. 
What do you believe about yourself? What do you think about yourself, say about yourself? What do you see when you look in the mirror? What do you think about your life? You know, and for those of you, <coughs> excuse me, that are ministers, what do you think about your life in ministry? Maybe you say, well, Pastor, I don't know if God's pleased with me because our ministry is small, our ministry is not growing, or we're, we're not really have money, we, you know. But you see all these thoughts, all these feelings inside of you? You know, many, many, many years ago, I had lunch with a man of God and I, we had had a wonderful service that morning in this church and the head count of people in the congregation was a little bit over 1900 people. And while we were having lunch, the pastor looked at me and he was very serious. And he said, Pastor Masbach, can I please talk to you about something that's really burdening me? I said, of course, sir. He said, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. It's just not growing. We're only 1,950 people and you know, I don't know what to do. And he was all downhearted. And I thought 1,950 people would be one of the biggest miracles for, for, for most ministers out there. So you see, you can fall trapped to that gloominess, that heaviness, and maybe because you compare yourself to somebody else. You know, he told me, he said he's been with other ministers and they have 5,000 people in their church. But you know, sometimes we can look at things not in the way the Father looks at it. When I looked at those precious people there that morning, my heart was almost exploding with joy because I felt so much of the Father's love for them. All those precious people were highly favored and my heart was rejoicing at God's favor for them. And I didn't see 1900 people, I saw individuals. And sometimes we can lose sight of what God sees about us. And I wanna encourage you, don't just look in the wrong mirror. Don't look in the mirror of what other people think or say about you. Look in the mirror of God's face and what do you see? He's looking at you right now and he's saying, rejoice, highly favored one. And you know, Mary could have rejected that. She could have, she could have probably said, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I've made so many mistakes. Or you don't know what you're talking about. My life is so difficult. Or you don't know what, I, what I'm going through with my parents. Or, you know, she, I'm sure she had her difficulties in life, but she didn't do that. She received the word of the Lord. And I want to encourage you to receive this word today. Rejoice, highly favored one. She received it. And she says in verse 39 of chapter, of chapter um, one of Luke, and Mary rose in those days and she went into the hill country with haste to the city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In other words, she came into that house, woohoo, Lizzie, hi, it's Mary. Well, you know, I don't know, but you know what I mean? When I come home, I, I, I go, hi, honey, it's me, or something like that, you know. And when Elizabeth heard Mary, the baby in her womb, who was six months in her womb, John the Baptist leaped with joy. The baby got filled with joy. And, Mary, and Elizabeth got filled with the Holy Spirit. And then she spoke out with a loud voice and said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. <clears throat> but why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the babe leaped in the womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there's a fulfillment of those things that would be told her from the Lord that were told her from the Lord. Blessed is he who believed. You see, Mary believed. Mary believed. Come on, be a believer. Believe, I'm highly favored. My Father loves me. My Father's for me. My Father is with me. I am highly favored. Come on, rejoice, highly favored one. Believe it. And look, Mary, oh my goodness, I love this spirit. When you believe, the good news that you're highly favored with God, oh, it will fill you with so much joy. Mary magnified the Lord. Magnified means made the Lord great. She says, my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. 
For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and he has scattered the proud in their imaginations of their heart, and on and on and on. Oh my goodness, you should read this. This is so powerful. Mary magnifying the Lord. She said he has regarded the lowly state of his, of his maidservant. Now come on, believe the report of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord to you today. Rejoice, highly favorite one. Have a good day. God bless you.